first, we thank you for pur purchasing the best lightweight, heavy-duty running board on the market. We've done some improvements on the boards from last year or from our previous years. But first, we want to show you how to take them out of the packaging, and then we will uh, give, show you the improvements that we've uh, done on them. So if you flip the board around here, you'll see the where the seam is here. Take a knife, just cut out the where the tape marks are, and follow the just follow this up, just like this here. And when you get to this end here, do the same thing. Just follow the the tape. and then go up and then you'll remove the running board and the final is to take it off with the support bracket and you can see where the tape is All right, now you've unpackaged the new running boards. As you can see, we put a special extrusion on the inside so we no longer have to rip it from the inside of the tunnel. Now it's from the bottom side. And on the back side, you'll see that we took and put an angle here and an angle on the back so that we can uh, evacuate the snow on the back, which we had some issues with the previous design. So the new design has totally taken the, that portion of the snow retention away from the running boards. Now that you've inspected the running boards, make sure everything was good on them. This is a shot of the tools that you will need if you're going to do a professional job on your installation. Now you don't need to have the air tools or the power tools that we do have, but it makes the job so much faster and easier. You can use a, instead of an air riveter, you can use the hand riveter. Instead of the uh, air chisel, you can drill your rivets out. But we're going to show you the professional, fastest and most professional way to install these running boards. So these tools, if you have them or your friends or neighbors or the shop, uh, this is a, all the tools that you're going to need. All right, this sled has our ProLite ProRam Air induction system on this sled so that the hood's going to look a little bit different than the stock hood, but it's the exact same removal process. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, is take the electrical connector off. Underneath here, there's a, there's a um, tab here, which is fairly hard to uh, get out. So you want to remove that. Then there's going to be two Zeus fashions, one on each side. And this one on our new hood does not require the center bolt, but on a stock hood, there will be a center bolt right here that you need to take out with a number 30 Torx. Then remove the hood, pull back on it. Next step is to take the seat off, which is a very simple procedure. Remove the two side mounted screws for the tabs. Pull back on the seat, grab on each side of here. And slide the seat from the gas tank. The next thing we're going to do is take the center console out, remove the gas cap, you're going to have two screws on each side. Just look at the screws because the outside one is a very short, blunt screw, which needs to go on the outside. So if you need to put your hand in there, you're not going to uh, get yourself scraped up.
Then there's four screws on the top rails where the spars come back. And you'll notice that all the other screws have a sharp point to them. Just the two outer ones have, are blunt. Okay, now we're going to remove the center console. Before we, we've got all the fasteners off, but the reverse beeper, which is on this side, has got two wires that you want to remove. So you're going to disconnect these two wires. And you'll notice that one is wider than the other one. You'll see the tabs on the beeper are the same exact way. So they will only go on one, one way there. So now we're going to lift this up. And this tab here, the split, just slide it over like this, slide it over, pull on your rope, and then set this off to the front. Now we're going to remove the spars for the fuel tank. There's two screws here and two screws here. These are 10 millimeter. Like I said, you can either use a hand tool or an air tool. Obviously, you see or a, a electric impact, but this is how we take it. Now, the most convenient way is to, re when you remove this, is to set this screw back in and just start it so that this piece doesn't come out. All right, now we're going to put the, the cap back on the fuel tank and then we're going to disconnect the electrical connector by pushing this tab in right here and it re releases that. Now you're going to release the fuel line and you'll notice that there's a blue tab here. There's another one on the back side so we're going to take the vice grip or you can take a pliers, rotate it, squeeze both of them and then it pops right off. So now you've got everything disconnected on the tank. Now we're going to go on the neck on the other side and clip off the two zip connectors that are holding the overflow. So we're going to clip these two zip ties. There's one here and there's one here. That removes the or the capability of removing the lines. Now we're going to remove the tank. Lift up on the back, slide it back, pull out your overflow tube, and now we remove the tank. Now we're going to remove the kick plates there for your foot toe area there. Some of these, depending on which sled model you have, there are two screws. There's an access panel or an access one that we have to get at to, to remove the back, the outside uh, screw here. So we're going to take this rivet out first so we can come in here and cut this out to remove the plastic so we can get at that screw. There's a back rivet that holds the plastic panel, your side panel on. It is right there. That's the top of it. We're going to grab that with a vice grip. And then we're going to take a drill and we are going to drill out this rivet. take this panel and go down and we are going to now you can see the the screw that is behind this access panel here now we're going to trim this plastic so we can reveal that out, outer screw Now we're going to remove the bottom screws that hold the container. Now 
Now kick this ahead and out, and that removes your kick panel. All right, now we're going to remove the rivets that hold your outer frame of your existing running board. In each of these centers, you'll see a center which we want to pop out. to make sure the, that that center pin is out. Just make sure all the center pins are out. These rivets usually don't have them in, but sometimes they do. Here are out. There's two methods that you can remove the heads of these rivets. One way is to take the normal way that most people have a 3 16 drill bit with the drill. After you've knocked that center out. If you have the, the, an air ratchet, excuse me, an air chisel, you can uh, use a, the chiseled blade and you will see how fast this is to take it off. existing running board support. And then there's going to be three rivets on the bottom. Once you remove the rear panel, it exposes the last rivet. Now you want to make sure that all of the rivets are out of the existing holes. These are already out, so those are, make sure all four of these holes are, there's no more rivets left in them. All right, now we're going to lift the back tunnel up with the ratchet strap. strap and now it's up high enough to uh, let your track down or let the skid down. Remove the two rear ones. and the nut. Now we're going to remove the front support. Take a rubber hammer. Knock this out. Now we're going to take this here, rotate this, and push it through the tunnel. Now we're going to remove this support with this 8 millimeter bolt. Lift up on, the, on this so that it puts pressure on the back side.
and your bolt will this bolt will be on either on top of your track or fall out you'll you'll re reuse these two components now once we remove the stock outer running board supports now we're going to cut off the existing tunnel portion we're going to use a white marker because we have a black tunnel if you have a green tunnel or a white tunnel you want to use a dark a black marker so what we're going to do is come across here and where this crease is here we're going to go across there and then we're going to use this as our edge here make a mark here take that and follow that forward like that now we're going to take on this side of the rivet we're just going to make a line like that and make sure you keep it as close to the rivet head the pierce rivet as possible now when you come down to here you're going to make the mark here, come across here, and just barely cut this off right here where it meets the guard for the ro brake rotor. Just come across like that. And then you're going to take and measure two inches from the back side of this hole. Mark it two inches. Now we've just marked the entire running board where we're going to do our cuts. All right, now that we're going to cut the running boards off of the chassis part, we're going to want to make sure that we have our safety glasses and our ear protectors because we use a double cut saw, which you can purchase at Harbor Freight. You can purchase at Menards, Home Depot. Uh, this saw will cut, as you will see, very quickly, very professionally. Remove this lip, lip on the top right here on the running board. We want to make that the same level as, as this so our new running board is to sit flat on this edge here. Next we're going to deburr, deburr the uh, chassis here and we use a deburring tool with air one. You can use a cordless or a corded one also. But as you'll see how we trim this up here.
right, we have to trim the front section of the running board, so we're just going to make a just an angle like this here. And then we're going to take an oscillating saw and come down here and we're going to cut this off. You just got to get it down far enough so you can take a pair of side cutters, grab it, and lift it up, and it'll snap right off. Okay, now once you've cleaned off the tunnel, we need to protect your skid from the paint because some skids are different colors than the, the color paint we're going to be painting with. So, so we're going to take anything that you want that's going to just come up here in the track. and cover that portion up. All right, now we're gonna get a high quality gloss enamel paint uh, for this black tunnel. If you have a green tunnel, you'll have to, or an orange tunnel, you're gonna to have to use the Articat uh, color. What we're gonna do then is slide this piece over so it protects the bumper. Then we'll spray this here. And once we get past here, now you can just take this and just be real, very careful and just do the edges There. Now you're going to take the paint and let it dry before you uh, go to the next step. All right, now we're going to grab the running board. Doesn't matter which side you start on. We're just happening to start on the uh, left side. You're going to grab the running board and you're going to grab the front retaining bolt and nut. So we're going to install it. We're going to set it on here. We're going to put this in. Now, if you notice the other way, the nut was on the top. This time, the nut's going to be on the bottom. So we're going to put the Torx fastener in there, take the nut, go underneath here, and start the nut. So now we're going to take a vice grip, uh, a swivel one, and we're going to clamp it on the inner edge here and underneath here. And that's going to clamp it down and toward the tunnel. So you should have a very, very minimal gap here. Once we do that, we're going to take the drill and we're going to come here. We're going to start this here three quarters of an inch from the inside ledge here in between this rivet and this rivet. And we're going to make a mark right there. So approximately three quarters of an inch from here to here. And put it in our air gutter. Hold it firmly against the lower part of the chassis and install that rivet. Then we're going to take this clamp. We're going to go up here to the second rib here. And we're going to do the same thing. And now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to drill three quarters of an inch halfway between these two rivets. Grab another short. Firmly push against it. All right, so we, as you can see, we've marked each of the holes. So there's one starting from this, uh, the first long support. One, two, the one we already drilled, three, four, five, and six. So there'll be six rivets on each side.
So after we've installed the rivets on the bottom, which include between this brace, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, there should be six rivets underneath now fastened to the bottom of the chassis. Now we're going to go to the back of the chassis, and I usually put grab my hand here and here to hold us against there, and I'll just tap it with a uh, rubber hammer and push down so it makes sure it's against the top of the tunnel. Blow off the chips and install your two rivets into the top. Firmly holding against the chassis. Rivet the, fir the top t first. Now drill from the side. I usually protect this part from the drill, so I'll put my hand here. And then the third hole up here. And like I said, we try to protect the, make sure that the running board doesn't get damaged from the drill. Okay, now we're going to install the last three rivets. We're holding firmly against the side of the tunnel. Now we're going to take a 13 millimeter wrench and a number 40 Torx. We'll take the wrench and bring it under around here. Grab the nut. And torque it down. Then we will take and drill these two rivets out here. Same thing protecting the, the drill away from the cross member. Final area is underneath of the, on the support for the tunnel, and we take our, our vice grip again, we clamp it, we go under here, grab the long the long rivet remove the clamp drill out the the other holes and then halfway between these two holes here we're going to drill a new hole for the new rivet area Okay, now we're going to drill the last rivet. It's a large flange head rivet that you're going to use in the front here. You're going to come in here, find the center of the running board. that as you can see there's an edge here that sticks out so we're going to take this hammer and we're just going to pound it like that around the, the uh, running board. All right now the running board is installed on the left side now we're going to repeat the exact same process 
to the right side. All right, now we're going to install the foot stop. And we install it from this side here, bring it up. You may have to bend it a little bit to get it in. Uh, we may have to push it this way or this way to, to first form it a little bit better. But once you do that, just set it in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start. We're going to start our long screws first. So we just get them started, don't have to tighten them up, but just get them, get those started. And you may have to bend this portion right here with a vice grip. You may want to take this and bend it up a little bit so you have a little more clearance there. Um, if you have clearance, you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, if you don't, you may have to want to bend that. Now you're going to start the bottom ones. All right, once we've now I've tightened all the bolts, there's four of them, these two here and the two there that we started. We're going to take a shorter flange head rivet and we're going to rivet the one that we removed earlier in the process. We take one of the running board ends that you just took off, put it through the chassis rear skid so you can use it for leverage to put your foot against it. And then what we use is a real simple jack, scissors jack, and we just take this until the hole lines up like this, install the bolt, the washer and the nut, and just lightly uh, start the nut so that we're going to tighten it after we have all the bolts installed in here. All right, now we'll take this back down. Go to the other side and install the other bolt. Now that we've installed the front two bolts, now we're going to go to the rear. We've let the tunnel back down and located the hole. And now we'll tighten up the front ones now that we, ones we installed. Alright, before installing the tank, make sure we blow off all the chips. Alright, we've installed the tank, making sure the fuel overflow line is tucked underneath here, comes out here, also the overflow for the coolant comes back through here and back along the running board side. So now we're going to put the supports in. So this support goes on top of that line. Like so. The other side goes underneath the overflow vent line. So we'll start these two first. All right, now we'll install the lower one. Just start it so we can get the other one started. Now these you can tighten up now.
Now we're going to plug in the fuel line back into the tank. Just press it on. You'll hear it snap. Plug in the fuel pump line for the electrical connector. You hear it snap. Then we're going to take this, rotate it back around. And the easiest way to install this is to put this at a, as you can see right here, we're going to put it at an angle and then pop it in place. Take the fuel cap off, set it down, put your cap back on. And we're going to connect the wires for the reverse beeper. It is a little bit tougher, but you can get at them. And like I said, one is got the large, and one's got the, the smaller spade connector. All right, now that we've got the four screws on the tank supports, now we're gonna take the blunt screw right here that's not sharp, and we're gonna put it on the outside fastener here. We'll tighten that. Then we're gonna take our drill, and we're gonna push in just a little bit here and find the center of the support here. Just drilled an eighth inch hole, and then we're going to take the, the sharp fastener, and we are going to all right. We've tightened that up. Okay. After repeating the same mounting of the console to the running board, we're going to go here and now fasten our zip ties to the cool the lines that uh, go along the running board here. So we'll run this here, and we'll push this through. And then we're going to do the second one right here. and make sure our lines are inside of the chassis. Snip off the ends. Rotate this to the inside like that and we are finished with the install.